we're going to continue to look at a little bit of the early days of Jesus' ministry. And one of the most significant things in the early days of his ministry is what um, most people call the woman at the well. You see this story, and it deals with a woman who has been outcast from her community, which we'll see reasons why as we get into it a little bit, and how Jesus actually is able to start a conversation and carry on a conversation with someone that no one else really would have carried on a conversation with. And it's a great outline for us as to how to deal with people that may be a little different than we are. Right? I'm going to break it up into two parts, today and tomorrow, because the first part I want to look at is the history of why Jesus is going, where he's going, why the Jews and the Samaritans absolutely cannot stand each other, and why this woman is very peculiar in the way she's acting. And then tomorrow we'll look at the actual ministry message of it as to what Jesus, when Jesus dives into the salvation side of it and how this woman, how he points out things in the woman's life that are not exactly in line with what she should be doing. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to be in, <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, um, chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although John, uh, although Jesus himself did not actually baptize only his disciples. So what we see is Jesus is hearing that the Pharisees are starting to attract attention, that he's starting to get the attention of the Jewish leaders, because John has already said in the other Gospels, there will come someone greater than I. There will come so I baptize you with water, but someone will come later on that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Notice that it says here, Jesus does not baptize himself, but his disciples do it. Jesus never actually baptized anybody with water. It was only his disciples that did that. He baptizes people with the Holy Spirit. And John, once again, makes that clear, you know, someone is coming greater than I. That's who he's talking about, John the Baptist is talking about. And Jesus has started to attract larger and larger and larger crowds than John the Baptist has, and the Jewish leaders are starting to notice. And Jesus isn't quite ready for the showdown that he knows is coming with the leaders. He knows it's eventually going to happen. But he's not quite ready to do it yet because he has a bigger purpose that he has to fulfill before this showdown can happen. So what's he say? He says, okay. He left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. Now, had to pass through, we're going to look at it in a minute. But this was the most direct route. All right? this was, if you look at a map, Judea, Galilee... Going through Samaria was, without question, the easiest, most direct route to do it. A little hilly, but you, you go up through it, straight through, you're done. So what was the problem? Well, Jews didn't set foot in Samaria. Period. It just didn't happen. And the reason is because they had a long and deep-rooted history of hatred for each other. All right? Now, the Samarians <coughs> excuse me, were actually... A tribe that came up, came into being about 800 years before Jesus. Right? And how they came into being is the Assyrian king had come into the northern kingdom of um, Israel and taken a whole bunch of captives and took them back with them. And these captives all of a sudden started intermarrying with Jews in the area they took them back to. So guess what that produced? The Samaritans. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Samaritans, in the Jewish eyes, were, it's a crude way to put it, they were half-breeds. Right? That's how the Jews saw them. That they saw them as impure Jewish people. They saw them as morally corrupt. They saw them as ethically corrupt. And they saw them as religiously corrupt. And any Jew that dealt with a Samaritan was instantly considered unclean. So you never would see a Jew walk through Samaria. What they would do is they would take the long way around, over by the Jordan River, kind of swing all the way around it, 
and avoid it completely. So when you see had to pass through, there's nothing in the text that says Jesus was in a hurry. All right? It's not like he had to go the shortest route. So why, did he, why does it say he had to pass through? Some texts say he must pass through. Well, because he had a mission. And one of the things he was doing was he was making a point because Jesus was a Jew, remember. We talked about this when his earlier, you know, Mary and Joseph taking him to the temple, going through all that stuff. So people would have known he was a Jew. And he's doing this to make a point. He's doing this to say, you know what? I don't care what everyone else says. I'm going to go minister to everybody. It doesn't matter what these deep-rooted customs and this deep-rooted hatred is. These people need ministered to as well. So he starts going through Samaria, right? And he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the, near the field that, Joseph had given his, that Jacob had given his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus was weary as he, from his journey, was sitting beside the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Sixth hour, if you remember from last time we talked, when does the Jewish day start? Bruce isn't here, by the way. Six o'clock. Yeah. Jewish day starts at six o'clock in the morning, so the sixth hour would be right about noontime. That's when he reaches this well. All right? A little bit hot at this point in the day as well. Okay? You're in the desert. You're in Palestine. Modern day Palestine is where you are. All right? Not exactly the most climate controlled place on the planet. So he and the, his disciples have walked. His disciples go on a little bit further in the town to get something to eat, and he's sitting at this well. Now, this Sychar place is specifically mentioned because it was a very significant piece of land in Jewish history. All right? This is the piece of land that Jacob, who would later be renamed Israel, right, gave to his sons. So his sons would have been part of this land, the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's sons, 12 of them, would have been part of this land and would have been inherited this land. This is also the land where when the um, Jews were exodus out of Egypt, they took Joseph's bones and reburied them here. This is a very significant piece of land in Jewish history that he goes to. And more importantly, this well that he's sitting at is a very significant well because it's known as Jacob's well or... Israel's well. Right? And that's why it's so significant, because this would have been the well that Jacob would have given to his sons, that Jacob would have used himself, that we, Jacob built himself. So this is a very significant thing that he does when he goes and sits here. Charlie? Is this where that dead water comes from? Yes, you, we'll get to that tomorrow, but yes. Mm -hmm. So, this was, like I said, this is a highly valued piece of land for the Samaritans, all right? Because just like the Jewish people, the Samaritans considered Jacob or Israel, as he was renamed, one of their fathers, right? Abraham, Jacob, you see that all the time. Isaac, those three, are they who, who they consider the father of their religion. And so Samaritans did the same thing, only in a little bit different way, which we'll see tomorrow. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to buy food. There's three things here that instantly jump out in this passage about the woman. Number one, she came alone. Right? Most of the time when you would see women, because women are the ones who would come to the well to draw water out of, we see this when um, Isaac's servant goes to find him a wife and he meets Rachel at the well. She's there by herself or with a group of people drawing it out. So they would go to the well, not just for the help of working the well, but also this was a social thing. You know, you think about, you know, hanging around the water cooler. This is what the women would do because the women were the ones who would go get the water out of the well. And when you get the water out of the well, it isn't like we do today. It isn't this real easy, you know, all these contraptions and other. It was literally a bucket. He would 
boats. Lower down, water would fill up the bucket, you pull it out, pour it into a jar. The jar was about five, held about five gallons and weighed about 40 pounds. And women did this, right? And they would come and they would usually work it together, help each other out, then take it back to wherever their houses or whatever their, their thing was. So she was alone. She came here alone. So that's one. Number two, so I lost my place. Yeah, where'd it go? There we go. She was out in a part of the day that no one came out to draw water right. Because you would either, either do it in the morning or the evening. And they did it twice a day, so they would do it at the morning or the evening. Why? Because it's cooler, right. Lugging 40 pounds back to your village. You don't normally do that in the rising heat of the day, right? So she comes out. She's by herself. <clears throat> she does it at a different time of day than most pe people would do it. And the third thing is, is she did it at a well that's farther away from her house. See, because the archaeological digs have discovered that the town is at, there's a bunch of wells that are actually closer to the town than this one. So what's she doing? She's purposely avoiding contact with anybody. She basically has a great big do not disturb, do not bother me sign on her as she comes to the well. And what's Christ do? Starts a conversation with her. Hey, can you give me some water? Now, now we're flipping it back around. Because this would have been something that was unheard of in Christ's day for several reasons. Number one, men normally didn't talk to women like this. This wasn't how it was done. It was very rare that you would see a man talk to a woman in public back in this time. Wouldn't your God's lives be a lot easier if that was still around today, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was very rare, right? And what we see here is Christ never once breaks a commandment or does anything immoral, right? Never once in the Bible, never once in his life does he do that. But what he does is he will always challenge these nonsensical rituals that society had put in place. He, all, he basically flaunts them. He basically takes enjoyment out of calling people out on the stupidity they put in their, law, their lives. And that's what he's doing here. By talking to this woman, he's saying, I don't care about any other stuff. He's starting a conversation with her without any of those barriers in place. And the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask me, <coughs> ask, for, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Once again, remember, Jesus is Jewish. And the woman would have known that a Jew would never drink from the same cup as a Samaritan. She would have known the hatred and the rituals and, and everything that would have gone from here. And not only that, she would also have known that Jews considered Samaritans permanently and completely unclean. So look at what she says. How is it that you are asking me for this? How did, how, and so she's almost saying, how dare you come and talk to me like this? Right? What are you doing asking me for a drink? Is really what she's saying. She's saying, you're a Jew. You despise me as a non-Jew. Right? You despise me as a woman. Because, I'll admit it, back in these times, women weren't exactly treated too great. All right? And you despise me as a Samaritan. She's saying, with that simple question, with, with you just asking me for a drink, you can't just undo all the years of hatred and barriers that were put up. Just like that. Well, tomorrow we're going to find out what Jesus' answer to that question is.